I'll be honest with everyone, this week's episode of Ningen Fushin was kind of mid, but pretty decent. <clears throat> there was, like, a lot of, like, backstory and development, more or less, and then kind of, like, their personal, like, growth and facing your past is pretty much the premise I got from this episode, and... It's going to set up a pretty good episode for next week's episode. However, it wasn't bad. And the nice thing about it was the animation of this episode was a lot better than the last few. Because, like, granted, the character designs are really great. But some of the movements that, I mean, that I've noticed personally, like, walking and, like, running on some angles has been kind of shatty. But what do you do you know i i don't know it's, it's geek toys i don't know how much they've really done per se i mean i think i think for the most part <clears throat> the next biggest thing they've done was like the fate things and plunder which is really weird because freaking plunder was really good but you know you can only do so much with what you got and i can't blame them but Let's just get into this week's episode. So it starts with Kazuna, you know, a newfound party member, uh, getting out of the dungeon for the first time in who knows how freaking long. And he's just really enjoying life. He's like, just like saying quotes about how awesome life is and how beautiful life is. Pretty much just being like a child for the first time outside in the real world. And it, it, it's, it's kind of like, okay, we get it, dude. But um they're you know they're the party members they kind of understand they think it's venison and cute which you know it kind of is and we're all meeting around the round table pretty much talking about our finances because they have about two bronze pieces and three small bronze pieces so pretty much enough for like a snack and of course with all their hobbies and everything they need to keep this money up to keep the pony working so <laughs> with that all going on um Freaking Kazuna notices that our little uh, Tiana has a flint striker, and she got it as a gift from her uh, her sen her senpai sensei while she was in college, which leads us to a flashback, pretty much, of how she got it in the last days at college because of her ex fiance, which stood the rumors that they were like sleeping together and all that fun stuff. Which, I don't know, it kind of seems almost like she did, but at the same time, she didn't, obviously. It just kind of, like, they don't play it off super, super in-depth. However, we can kind of get the grasp that maybe her and her sensei didn't really exactly see eye to eye. Even though she learned a lot from him, he was just kind of a really socially awkward dude. But while this reminisce goes on and ends, she kind of, like, realizes, like, how happy and blessed she was in her past but at this point in time she's still excited to go forward and move on but they're all kind of like dwelling on things that have been and we kind of get this flash of her and 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 everybody else and they're kind of feeling the same way until we get to like nick who has like a dream of his ex that 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 kind of shoddy cloudy and who like we don't know much about we just kind of seen slightly images of what kind of happened in that first episode but this episode definitely breaks that so we get to know more about claudine and her shoddy you know habits and everything but another thing we kind of learned about this episode is that freaking telepathy just telepathy so kazuna has this like ability to give everybody telepathy and they have a stone with them as well and they're like sneaking up onto this ogre that looks just like the one that they defeated before and we come to find out when there's like a mana cloud that comes over every so often they regenerate really shatty <laughs> that's that's the word of this day but you know it is what it is and so kazuna pretty much goes full force attacking this thing which they were using telepathy but it almost seemed very pointless because quran was actually down there right next to it like like ruining this plan to like sneak attack it but like i said uh, kazuna goes and he just 
destroys this thing. He uses his like technique to like clone himself, and we find out that he's able to do it up to five times. But since him and, and I think it's a him and Nick make the pack together, he uses Nick's stamina and mana to do these types of things. So it drains him, which could be uh, some foreshadowing into the future. Same with like the unison technique that he does mention that does. You know, you pass out right away after it. So it's a technique that you want to save for something that's no was going to be a finale. We go after the dungeon. There's really not too much in dungeon crawl in this episode, which I was kind of sad about. But like I said, character development and everything and backstories and future processing. So we go to this bar with Kran, Nick and, and Kazuma. And it's this bar that was the bar that he ended up Nick ended up breaking up with Claudine there. So he's a little nervous to go in, especially having that dream about Claudine earlier on. And they get their food, and it looks pretty good. And then obviously, with <laughs> with Karan being such a food expert, it makes the most sense, obviously. But Nick overhears Claudine saying the exact same things that she said to Nick to this poor little boy who ends up giving her this, like, rare item worth of value and she's like giving this speech about how she's got to go check on her mom it's like a month away and traveling by carriage and she's sick and so she's just obviously conning people out of money so nick pretty much confronts her and you know calls her out in her bullshit and when this happens she's not the happiest person but you know i think the boy in the long run gets happy about it because she finds out that she's just fronting his ass so in the long run it worked out for everybody except claudine because fuck claudine so the next day we go to the tet that like a different tavern and the whole the whole group's meeting together and claudine pours a whole beer on top of nick's head but nick's just taking it because he knows exactly who it is and they make fun of their guild name and it's absolutely hilarious i can't remember it's something tigers but he calls it the kitties of course and she's got another party member with her. And he's acting all tough and everything with it. So he asks Nick to go out back and talk to him like a fight. However, he pretty much, you know, like, tells Nick that he's like, good job. We're sick of her shit and all her fucking pawning. We just want her gone now. And he pretty much accuses Nick of stealing money from this whole party. And Nick's not going to stand for that, you know, because Nick's already gone through that kind of crap. So Nick pretty much calls him out this bullshit and, and throws him to the ground in submission until um one of his other party members which was a spellcaster of some sort shoots him with a wind ball and knocks him down in his face and while he's down you know calling him out a two-on-one Quran comes and flips his sorcerer on his freaking face with her tail and throws him on the ground and Right before anything serious can happen, the guild master comes and like throws a pen right into Nick's face, and it was freaking hilarious because Nick's like, you know, gloating about how he's a good fighter and the other guy's shit, and the guy then says that he's good, but he he could still take a pen to the face, like yeah, you know, sometimes shit happens. <laughs> but then the guild master wasn't gonna like do anything about it. She just wanted him to do it fair and square, like because obviously there's probably guild rules per se of how you can, you know, dissolve a type of fight between different. Um, groups and everything and we come to find out that tiger boy knows what it's called it's called a mathematics bare knuckle battle which we didn't get to see this episode but let me tell you i'm actually pretty excited to see what a mathematics bare knuckle battle is uh, it's gonna be thrilling and you know like i said there wasn't too much to like really discuss this episode it was more like a process episode halfway through the season but I enjoyed it. It was, it was like I said, the anime wasn't as, as, as shaddy as it has been in the past. We didn't get too much out of it, but we got a decent episode, so I can't really grab about it. Um, but that's pretty much all I have to say about this week. I guess like there ain't much to say. We'll, uh, we'll discuss more in, in the next video this week of uh, something I end up watching, let's be honest here. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if not, thanks for staying this long. If you're feeling real curious, I would very much appreciate a sub. And, uh, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much all I got for today. 
This has been Squids, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.